everyone. I'm here at Claremont Farm today to learn all about tractors. Tractors are the most important vehicle on the farm. They help farmers like Andy and his family do really big jobs, like planting a whole field of potatoes. Let's get out on the road! Oh dear, I think I'm on the wrong tractor. Andy? Ah, here's Andy now, with a much newer blue tractor. Andy, can you show us round your beautiful tractor, please? OK, the front of the tractor. These are the heavy weights. So if we're picking up machinery at the back, we don't want the tractor to flip up. So these keep it all straight and on the ground. These are our lights. Sometimes we have to work at night and we need as much light as possible. So not only do we have the headlights, but we have spotlights at the top as well. This is the exhaust pipe. We don't want the exhaust at the back with all the machinery, so we keep it up front here and it's high so we're not breathing in the fumes. This is the huge tractor tyre with big tractor tread here. If it's really wet and muddy in the field, we need as much traction as possible because we don't want to be slipping. The back of the tractor. This is where we connect all the implements. This is called three-point linkage. One, two, three. This goes down and picks the machinery up at the back. And this is my tractor. Thanks, Andy. Tractors can drive on roads, but muddy fields are where tractors can really get to work. The huge wheels mean they'll never lose grip, no matter how sticky it gets. But that doesn't stop it being really bumpy. Whoa! In the spring, it's time for the farmers to get into the tractor and plant some seed potatoes. They drive in straight lines, creating these lovely neat rows. Imagine doing all of this planting by hand. It would take ages. But luckily, with the help of a tractor, you can plant a whole field in just two days. Deep under the ground, those little potatoes are busy spreading and growing into lots of new potatoes all throughout the year. Farmers rely on the changing of the seasons. Spring, summer, autumn and winter to help their crops grow. It's now autumn and the leaves are falling off the trees. Out in the fields, we're going to be using the tractor to dig up the potatoes that we planted. They've been growing all summer long. You can put all sorts of different equipment onto the back of a tractor. And today, the farmer's attaching a huge potato harvester. Now we're connected, it's away we go. The tractor pulls along the harvester as it pulls out the potatoes from the ground. The potatoes shoot up through the harvester and make their way down this conveyor belt where the farmer checks all of the potatoes. He throws away any bad ones. Once all the potatoes are collected, the harvester lifts them up and tips them into a trailer. The farmer then hooks up the trailer and takes the potatoes back to the farmyard. Back at base, the farmers open the trailer up and push the potatoes onto another conveyor belt that creates a massive potato mountain. Think of all the mashed potato you can make out of that. Now let's have a look at how you drive a tractor. So this is my tractor cab. This is my steering wheel. And all modern tractors now have power steering, which means that it's easier to turn the big wheels in the field. Here, this red lever, this means the tractor can go forward or back. Forward or back. Here, this is where we turn the lights on. On this side, we have the hare and the tortoise. This is slow and this is fast. 
we have 15 different gears on a tractor. It's from very, very slow to fast on the road. So, do you remember seeing that big mountain of potatoes? Well, we can't see them now. And here they are. So we have to cover the potatoes with straw. The straw keeps them nice and warm to stop the frost getting in during the winter, but it also stops the light getting in. If a potato sees the light, it turns green and then we can't eat it. So it has to be completely dark. Once the potatoes are ready, they make their way to the kitchen where they're washed, peeled and chopped into chips by the chefs in the kitchen. Look at that! Fresh potatoes straight from the field and onto the plate. Yum! I've loved learning all about the different jobs that a tractor can do on the farm. Without these amazing vehicles, farmers wouldn't be able to grow all of those tasty vegetables that end up on your plate. Thanks very much to Andy and everyone at Claremont Farm for teaching us all about their tractors. We'll see you again soon. Bye! Hello everyone! I'm here at the tarmac quarry to meet an amazing digger called an excavator. Excavators are the perfect vehicles for digging up loose rock. Instead of wheels, excavators run on caterpillar tracks, which are really good at gripping onto all sorts of surfaces so that the excavator doesn't slip. That means they can climb up really steep, rocky surfaces like this. Here on this quarry, they're mining for limestone rock. But to break the huge rock faces into smaller pieces, the team from Tarmac plant explosives into the rock. Using explosives is really, really dangerous, which is why the team here are specially trained. They drill holes all the way along the rock and fill them up with the explosives. Then it's time to detonate. Stand by. Three, two, one. Now the excavators can move in to dig up all of the loose rock. This is the boom, the dipper and the bucket. These three parts all work together to make the excavator amazing at digging. The arm can dig really deep and reach really far. Far. Wow! I'm an excavator and digging is my job. I'm an excavator. It's time to load this rock. Round and round and up and down. An excavator digs the rocks and rubble from the ground underneath the twigs. There's no trouble loading and we're filling up the lorry These rocks will make a new road now We've dug them from the quarry I'm an excavator And digging is my job I'm an excavator It's time to load this rock I'm an excavator And digging is my job This is Dave, the operator of this excavator. Once he's inside, he can use these two joysticks to control exactly what the arm does. He scoops up as much loose rock as possible, lifting it high into the air and drops it into this machine. 
which then crushes and sorts the rock into large, medium and small sizes. This rock can then be used to build houses, roads and for farming. Excavators can move in amazing ways. The cab, arm and bucket can spin all the way around whilst the tracks stay still. This is called 360 degree movement. Woo! Dave, are you dizzy yet? Using the pedals in the cab, Dave can make the excavator move side to side like a crab. Left Right, left, right, and they can move forwards and backwards, forwards and backwards. Excavators can also load rock into dumper trucks. Once the rock is ready to load, the dumper truck reverses into place and the bucket drops the load of rock into the hopper on the back. Good job, everyone! I've loved learning all about these amazing excavators today. Thanks to Dave and all the team at Tarmac for showing us what they can do. We'll see you again soon. Bye! Hello, everyone! Whoa! Look at this amazing red fire truck! This beautiful vehicle has everything that a fire truck should have. Lights, a siren, seats for the crew, a hose for putting out fires and a ladder. But this fire truck is hiding a very special secret. It's also an amazing pizza-making truck with a wood-fired oven inside. This is Ben. He bought this old fire truck and spent a long time transforming it into the amazing pizza-making vehicle it is today. Hello, Gecko. Hello, Ben. We need to get some cheese for our pizzas. Do you fancy a ride in the fire engine? Yes, please. This fire truck is over 60 years old. Brave firefighters would drive in this special vehicle to go and put out fires. Things worked a little differently 60 years ago in fire trucks. Look, instead of pressing a button for the siren to make a noise, Ben has to wind this lever like this. Here we are at the cheese factory to pick up some special mozzarella cheese. Hi Ben. Hi Hi Gecko. Here's mozzarella. Fantastic, thank you very much. Right Gecko, let's go make some pizzas. There's lots of things that go into making the perfect pizza, but one of them is heat. A really hot oven is what's needed, and luckily, Ben has a special wood-burning oven which uses real fire. Ben starts off with small sticks called kindling to get the fire started, before adding larger logs to make the fire bigger. Ben then safely pushes the burning logs to the back of the oven to make space for all those yummy pizzas to go in. Remember, fire is very hot and extremely dangerous, so only grown-ups should ever go near it. It takes a little while for the oven to get really hot, so Ben sets up the rest of the pizza stall. And here come some helpers to make lots of pizzas. Hi, Gecko! Hello, everyone. Let's get pizza making. Pizzas were invented in Italy. 
And to make pizza dough, all you need is flour, water, yeast and salt. Ben's already got some dough that he made last night. And now he's busy stretching and shaping it into pizza bases. Once the pizza base is nice and thin, Ben adds some tasty red tomato sauce and the special mozzarella cheese. Then you can put whatever topping you like on your pizza. Yum! The wooden board that the pizza is sitting on is called a paddle and Ben can now move the pizza towards the scorching hot oven. Put it inside and then slide the pizza off with a shake. The pizza sits right on the floor of the oven where it's super hot. Over 300 degrees to be precise. Luckily, you don't have to wait long for this yummy pizza to be ready as it only takes a minute. Wow, that looks delicious. Everyone's joining in with the pizza making. Great job, guys. Everyone's doing such an amazing job of making and eating pizzas. It's making me hungry. Hey Gecko, we made a special pizza just for you. Oh, thank you very much. This pizza is absolutely delicious. I'm really full now, but what an amazing day we've had. Thanks very much to Ben for showing us around his wood-fired pizza engine. And thanks to all you helpers. I'll see you again soon. Bye! Hello everyone! I'm spending the day with some real recycling trucks today to see how these amazing vehicles tidy away our waste whilst also looking after our planet. There's so much happening here at the recycling depot with trucks coming and going. Just look at how the little forklift trucks zoom around, taking the rubbish out of the sides of the trucks and tipping them into their own special places. But our story begins at home. Have you ever wondered what happens to the rubbish you put in your bins? Recycling trucks have special days when they come past your house to collect all of the rubbish. Recycling is a way of separating different types of rubbish that you throw out, so that it can be used again and again. This all starts at home, so it's up to all of us to separate plastics, paper, cans and food waste into their different bins to get them ready for collection. Here comes the truck now. It's purple. I love purple. This is Simon and Daniel and they drive the recycling truck down the street collecting all of this rubbish. They jump out of the truck and put the different types of rubbish in their own special place on board. Look! There's a place for everything. Cans and plastic go here. Glass goes in here. Food waste goes in here. With paper and cardboard at the back in these compartments. When the truck is full, it's time to head back to the depot to empty everything out. First, the truck drives onto some weighing scales. These are just like scales in your bathroom at home. But instead of weighing people, they weigh trucks. This tells the control centre just how much rubbish is on board the truck. Then, 
it's time for the zoomy little forklifts to do their whizzy work. They pull each container out from the sides of the truck and drive them to their own special place at the depot. Wow! Listen to that noisy glass. Huge bulldozers are used to push all the loose materials into a big pile. Then, to make everything smaller so that it can be easily transported for recycling, loose materials like plastic, cans and paper are squashed into bales. The final stage of recycling is called reprocessing. This is the bit where these bales are turned into something new that we can use again. The bales are taken on the back of big lorries to special factories for reprocessing. Glass can be melted down and made into new bottles. And the bales of cans can also be melted and turned into new cans ready to be filled with new drinks. When we recycle, it means we don't have to cut down new trees to make paper. We can keep reusing the paper we already have. Recycling is amazing but not as amazing as our beautiful planet that we all live on. That's why we have to work together to recycle and reuse our rubbish. Thanks to all the team at Kia for taking me out on their special recycling trucks today. See you again soon. Bye. Hello everyone. I'm meeting up with my old friend, Mr. T and his amazing ice cream truck today. I've asked for his help to organise a surprise for one of my friends. Here he comes now. Hi, Gecko. Hello, Mr T. Thanks for coming. So what's the plan? Well, I think it's about time that my friend Vicky the Ice Cream Van had a treat of her own. She's always so busy serving yummy ice cream treats to other people that I thought it was about time someone made a treat for her. What a lovely idea, Gecko. Let's make Vicky the biggest, best ice cream ever. Hop in. So, Gecko, we've got lots of amazing ice cream in my machine at the back. But to make it really special, I think we need to find some treats to put on top. Great idea, Mr T. Sounds like we've got ourselves a treasure hunt. Hey look, Mr T. What's that over there? I think I see a treat box. Open it, Mr T. Let's see what's inside. It's two giant bags of sweets. These are going to add lots of colour to Vicky's ice cream treat. And they'll be nice and chewy too. Amazing. Let's see what else we can find. Look, Gecko, there's another treat box here. Send it down the slide, Mr T. I wonder what it is. Hooray! It's a big box of waffles. Should we get back in the van and find some more treat boxes? So, Gecko, it's time to put some music on. Let's see if my old friends at the RNLI have seen anything. Oh, hi, Andy. You haven't seen any treat boxes round here, have you? 
As a matter of fact, they have. Have a look on deck. Hey Gecko, I found one. Let's see what's inside. It's a huge bottle of my favourite sauce. Good job, Mr T. I wonder if there's any treasure around that pirate ship over there. Let's take a look in the treasure chest. We've found treasure. It's another treat box. Wow, it's a bag of giant marshmallows. Wow, Vicky will love them. Hey look, we're just passing Claremont Farm. Let's pop in and see if Farmer Andy has seen any treat boxes. Hey Gecko, good to see you again. You looking for a treat box? Yes, we are. Go and have a look in my tractor. We found another treat box. Oh. It's a giant chocolate bar. Wow, that's the biggest chocolate bar I've ever seen. I think that should be enough treats to make Vicky the most amazing ice cream creation. Let's go make it. To make the perfect ice cream creation for Vicky, we need the perfect ice cream cone. And I've got just the thing. That is brilliant. Let's get cracking. And now I think there should be something healthy in there as well. Remember them strawberries that we got from Claremont Farm? And finally, some chocolate. Hurry, Mr. T. I think she's on her way. Hello, Vicky. Lovely to see you. Me and my friend Mr T have a big surprise for you. I decided that it's about time someone made a treat just for you. After all of the amazing treats you always give to other people. So we decided to make you Vicky's treasured treat served in the perfect ice cream cone. Here you go, Vicky, just to say thank you. Did you see how happy that ice cream surprise made her, Gecko? I've never seen her so happy. That's given me an idea. Maybe we should go and give some treats to more people who deserve them. So 
who's ready for some free ice creams, guys? Now let's serve the amazing crew of the RNLI lifeboat. Hello guys, how do you do? You alright? Well guys, you lot deserve a free ice cream, so there you go. There's plenty of yummy ice cream for the amazing volunteers who work in charity shops. They raise money for good causes. There we are Paula, thank you very much for being such a lovely person to the community. You enjoy that, my love, and there's one there for your colleague as well, yeah? Okay then, no problem at all. Enjoy. Farmer Andy works really hard down on the farm. It's time he had a break and some yummy ice cream, all topped off with his special strawberries. Nothing puts a smile on people's faces quite like an ice cream gecko. I've loved spreading a bit of joy to Vicky and all of these amazing people. Thanks to Mr T for making all of his wonderful creations. Have a think if you could do something special to put a smile on someone's face today. I think you can really brighten up somebody's day. I'll see you again soon. Bye! Bye.